Hello everyone and welcome back to the Library of the Weird. I hope you're doing fine. I am and I hope you're up for some great horror. So today we are finishing our coverage of the Bram Stoker Awards or at least of the books I read and we're finishing with a banger because today we're talking about the book that won the award for best anthology and this is Alan Dedlow's Screams from the Dark. 29 Tales of Monsters and the Monstrous. So, of course, anthology means that this book wasn't written by Ellen Dedlow. It features 29 different authors and the stories were compiled and edited by Ellen Detlow. And if you don't know her, please look her up. She's one of the greatest anthology editors in the horror genre or in any genre, I, I believe. She's put out tons of different anthologies. At the beginning of this book, there are two pages covering, I believe, all the anthologies uh, Ellen Dedlow put out in her career. And yeah, I mean, there are two pages of anthologies. So please check her out. She's awesome. This book was released in 2022 by Nightfire. And it has about, I believe, about 500 pages. I have like this, this really, really nice hardcover with a very strange cover. I don't, I don't know how much you can see. Um, but it features some kind of monster with a person standing, I believe, in its mouth. It's really, really strange. Um, but I believe you can get this book, uh, also as soft cover or as an ebook, um, whatever you prefer. And when I said in the beginning that I was really, really excited for this book, it's mostly because the insane roster of authors in here. There's a story by Stephen Graham Jones, who is mostly famous for the award-winning novel The Only Good Indians, but who's also writing the Late Witch, uh, Lake Witch trilogy. There's a story by Gemma Files, who also won, uh, won an award for her short story collection, in that endlessness our end there's a story by joyce carol oates who is a pillar of the horror genre then there are stories by nathan bellingrad by lad baron by john lang and caitlin erkiernan so many of the most famous short story authors are here in this anthology and of course all the stories in here like the title says have a common theme and that theme is monsters. In some stories, we're really diving into mythology and not only like European or American mythologies, but also uh, their stories out of India, out of uh, Africa and from like everywhere around the world, Australia. Um, and that's really, really crazy. And other stories have like a more modern tone and some even reach into the science fiction genre. So this is a very, very wide anthology, and I believe there's something for everyone in there. And what I also really, really liked about this anthology is that we're not only covering monsters, like monsters, monsters, but in many cases in here, the monsters are the humans. And I always liked monsters like monsters are so deeply ingrained in human storytelling when we're talking about the so-called western world um, we have like the greek myths where monsters always play a role um, take for example medusa or the minotaur and what's really strange about the greek mythology <laughs> is that most of the monsters were created by the gods for something other gods di uh, did. 
So for example, Zeus wanted to fuck a woman and Hera, his wife, got really, really jealous and envious and just turned uh, the woman into like some kind of monster. And this kind of storytelling evolved and we got more and more monsters. We got like the undead uh, vampires or Wiedergänger or a Drauger, uh, like the zombies of, of Central and Northern Europe. Uh, we got werewolves, uh, the North American shapeshifters, witches, the Arabian genie and ghouls and so many, many more. And many of these you will find in this anthology. Something I always found interesting about monsters was that they're always connected with some kind of cultural warning or uh, like customs and saying something like don't get into the uh, don't go into the forest because there is a monster there or don't uh, touch the graves because the dead will come back for you and like even now uh, at least here in germany uh, every lake where people fish has some story about a huge fish who once tucked a dog into the water or something like that. Of course, you cannot fit all monsters into that type of thing, but this is something I found really, really interesting. But then there have always been humans who we described as monsters, uh, either the press, the media, or we talk about people as, as, as monsters ourselves. And in a huge chunk of stories in this anthology, um, the humans are the monsters. We see strange death cults, um, sexual predators, biased judges, um, doctors. The, the story by Jace Carroll Oates is about James Marion Sims, who was an American doctor. And at that time, he was hailed as like the father of modern gynecology. And guess what? He all his exper experiments, he did on slaves, on slave women, who most of them really didn't want to be test subjects. And yeah, he's obviously the monster. But then there are some stories which have like a Frankenstein-esque uh, kind of vibe. Um, if you don't know or if you have never read uh, Mary Shelley's Frank Frankenstein, um, there's a huge discussion or, or one point you can interpret however you want is who is actually the monster in the book. Is it the creature made by Frankenstein or is Victor Frankenstein himself the monster? And there are very good arguments for both sides and there are stories in here uh, which you, if you want to, can discuss in the same way. And sometimes, and this is one of the, I think, most interesting and most deep kind of stories in here, sometimes the monsters are something we carry with us, something that happened to us or something we were born with um, and where we, we, we cannot blame someone else or cannot really blame someone else. And um, I don't want to get too philosophical, but I'm currently reading the Sandman comics by Neil Gaiman. And there was one scene with two boys who were talking about hell. And one of them said, um, I think hell is something you carry around with you and not somewhere you go. And this is really, really interesting in this kind of context, because sometimes the monsters we carry with us are mental illnesses like depression, for example, or just something we cannot really control and have to try to find a way to deal with. And yeah, I think this is also a really, really nice idea. The story by Caitlin R. Kiernan um, called The Strandling is about a person who 
has a terminal illness and tries to find a way to deal with that. And the person obviously carries her monster with her. So as you probably noticed by now, there's a lot going on with this anthology. Um, and apart from the things I already talked about, most stories are not only monster stories, but deal with way more serious topics and have like really deep cutting themes. There are stories uh, which focus on abandonment by, by your family or by your loved ones. Like I said, stories focusing on mental illnesses, um, unhealthy obsessions or like unhealthy expectations. Uh, for example, there's a woman who was really, really good at everything she did and everyone expected her to do great and she kind of finds a new purpose which is very very strange then there's a story on how fame in the age of the internet can affect people or there's a ton of stories focusing on the struggles of women not only on our society but also in other societies, um, which I find really, really interesting. That said, there are also some stories which are not as heavy in tone or actually quite funny, um, while also dealing with deeper themes. For example, there's the story by Daryl Gregory called The Virgin Jimmy Peck, which is about this guy, Jimmy Peck, who is very naive and like, He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. And this makes the story rather funny, although it um, touches deeper themes like the dangers of loneliness and cults and stuff like that. Um, but that makes the story really interesting. And uh, I laughed a lot while reading this story. And the other one that uh, instantly comes to mind is the story by Stephen Graham Jones, which is called Children of the Night, which kind of sounds serious at first, but um, when you read it, you find out it's kind of a love letter or an homage to early monster movies. And it's also kind of a parody, um, but it's I, I liked it a lot. And with that, I'm basically finished with my review. I really love this anthology. It took me a while to read this. Um, the story is, uh, this anthology is kind of long. I mean, it's only, only 500 pages, but, um, the pages are very big and the letters are very small. Um, so I don't know how many words this has. I liked most of the stories. There's not one story that comes to mind um, where I would say like, I really did not like it. Like I said before, it's a very broad anthology while focusing on something seemingly as narrow as monsters. Um, but we have a very, very diverse cast of authors. We have a very, very diverse collection of stories. And this is something I really liked about this. I hope you like this review. Um, I hope you will read this anthology as well. I don't know if I come back to books from this edition of the Bram Stoker Award. There's at least one I kind of want to read, but um, I don't have any plans yet. The next time I'll be back with something bigger, I haven't done a reading wrap up in, I think three months. So I will be back with a summer wrap up, which will be cover, I don't know, 12 books or something like that. So I hope you tune in for that as well. And with that, I wish you a very, very great week. Um, I hope I see you next time. Until then, goodbye.